Hi, Melanie Minchinger here, illustrator for Gina K Designs. Today I am following up with my new set from Gina K Designs, Holiday Frame Fillers, and I want to thank you so much for all the great feedback that I've already gotten on this set. As I promised last time, I want to show you more of what you can do with these different themed arcs to make wreaths on your cards. So this is a Happy New Year card that I made using the two different sizes of sequin images in this set. But I'm going to be making it into a wedding card today. My niece recently got married. They had beautiful gold, black, and silver colors. So I think that'll be perfect for their wedding card. Very minimal supplies for today's card. We're going to be using the Gina K Gold Pure Luxury cardstock and then just a piece of the Gina K white cardstock. And you can use the layering weight or the heavy base weight white, and I will post the dimensions below. The ink pads we're using today, I've got the Memento Tuxedo Black, and I've got the Gina K Prickly Pear. And finally, we're going to be using the Gina K Moonlit Fog. So those are all the supplies that we're going to be using today. You might also want to use some sticky notes or that mask that I showed you before. Okay, we're going to be using a large block for that frame stamp. We're going to be using the holiday frame filler set, of course. So here is the large and small sequin, and I'll show you something about that in a moment. Here is the holiday frame set. And then you're going to need a small block for stamping the sequin. And then I also like to use this block for stamping that arc into the circle like we did in the previous video. Okay? So really quickly though, I want to show you the different wreaths that you can make with this because I didn't even realize how many things that I could do with it when I was designing it. But then you start playing with all the different pieces and it's just so exciting. So this first sheet, and I have made PDFs of all of these so that we can post these on the freebies page of Stamp TV for you to reference. So all of these are created when you stamp each of the arcs four times. So you see you've got four bows, the ribbon like I did in the intro video, the ovals, this is beautiful for those patterned eggs, stars, dots, pumpkins, perfect for Thanksgiving and fall, the circles, these are so fun in so many different ways. This is the one that we're using today. Then we've got the patterned eggs in there, just the leaves, the circles and the sequins like we're doing today, and then the flowers. But look what you can do when you layer these different ones on top of each other. So the first step that you're going to do, you're going to see in gray, and then the one that I would stamp over it is going to be in black. So look how much you can change it up by putting the dots over the ribbon or over the stars, putting the stars over the ribbon or the dots with the leaves, the circles on top of the dots, the dots with the dots and just shift it a little bit, having a really, really full flower arrangement in different colors like a two-step, and then even layering these circle borders to create this really cool retro and bubbly pattern. And then I've got the flowers and dots down here. So that's when you're stamping them four on top of four. But let me show you another thing that you can do. Obviously, I love those wreaths that have different sections in them, whether it's going to be a bow or flowers or whatever. So here's just some different combinations showing when you put the bow in a different section or just maybe mix these different pieces together. I just love all these different looks. And I love having the bows in different orientations. So really fun. I mean, that's over 30 wreaths that you can do right there. And there are more things that you can do. And also, for these fillers, I just used the fillers from this particular set. But I do want to turn your attention to this little circle border right here. So in addition to the sequins fitting in with that, you're also going to be able to fill that border with the two chevron pieces from the holiday frame set, and then from the fabulous holiday filler set, you've also got the two sizes of the bold, the plaid, the hound's tooth, and the polka dots. So all of these can go in any kind of mixture in this filler. So let's get started stamping. I'm gonna go ahead and put my frame in the moonlit fog on the white. So I want to make sure I get this inked up all over, hitting those corners. 
and I'm making sure that I've got the pad flat on the frame so that it's going across two sections of it so that I'm not going down into the edge. You could also do this in black, but I wanted it to recede a little bit so you're really noticing the sequins more. And I'm going to turn it this way so we're doing a landscape orientation, but you could also do it portrait style. And I'm just going to lay this on top, pardon my head for a moment. Press all over. Okay, so there's my impression. And you can also do the stamping. I chose the gray and the, the, the prickly pear because I think it really looks like silver and gold, so you can get that look without having to do metallic embossing. We're going to be doing some stamping off here, though, and so I'm just using the black to get my gray sequins. But if you want, since you've already got that pad out, you can do that as well. So now let's go ahead and we're going to do the circle pattern inside. And actually, I'm going to do this in gray as well. I forgot, but you could also do it in black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the middle of this, just lay it on top there, and then this circle border is going to go so that I've got the edges of my circle on these little crosshairs here, so it's going to be stamped in quadrants or like sections of a pie or a pizza. So I'm going to put that so it's in the middle and then just stamp that and then I'm going to turn it and find the middle again, pardon my head, and it's okay if you end up overlapping a little bit because we're going to fill in with those sequins. So I'm finding the middle again, stamping, and then I'm going to turn it one more time. Just fit that in right there. So I'm off by just a little bit and that's where I'm going to put some of the sequins so that you don't see that. Now I'm going to take the smaller stamp and I'm going to do my greeting, or smaller block, excuse me. So I'm going to do congrats on your wedding. And that is going to fit just right in the middle there. Okay. And you could put these on the block on the same time if you're doing the same color, but I kind of like to do them separately just because sometimes you want to get a little bit closer than the base of that image will allow you to. So I just think it's a little bit more precise to do them separately. Okay. Okay. So congrats on your wedding. And I turned it portrait style here since I had it turned, so you can do it either way that you want. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to start stamping our sequins. So I'm going to do the large one first, and I'm going to do the black. So let's go ahead and fill in where these are overlapping, and then you won't even see that. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to go into another large one. It's very easy to tell which ones are the large ones and which ones are the small ones. So I'm going to do black and then stamped off. So this is going to make it go really quickly. I don't have to tap it off on my paper. I can just fill it in with just the one ink pad and get those two shades. So I'm just making it play and bounce around there. Then I also want to have a little bit of a border here. So I'm going to do the black in the large one. And then I'm going to skip so I have the gold one in between. And if it helps you on spacing to alternate those, then you can do that as well. So I just want to have a border going down the middle. Then let's go and do this yellow, the prickly pear. And I'm going to do two shades of this as well. And I am so excited about these sequins. You're going to start seeing me use them on everything because I just don't have a lot in my stash, but I love the look. Just three or four in different sizes on your cards. So pretty. And if you want, you can emboss these with a clear powder. 
or you could tap it onto your Versamark before you stamp it onto your colored pad and that'll give you a nice shine on there. And you can add some more if you want later. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little gold one here and then a little gold one here. And in this orientation, it kind of reminds me a little bit more of a tuxedo. So I'm gonna add in just a couple more. And then I'm gonna go back and I wanna have just a few of the small ones in the black. So let's switch to the black pad now. And it is just so fun stamping these. I just love doing two steps just every time. I think, ah, look at that, it fits perfectly. It's filling it in. You're getting lots of color on your card, having fun making it your own. Every card is gonna be different and it's really fast and easy. Okay, I think that's all I want. Actually, I think I want a little bit more gray up here and a little more black down here. So kind of, kind of take a step back or a look back and see maybe where you need to balance out some of your dark and then your light in another area. Now I'm gonna take my post-it notes cause I forgot to get my mask out, but you can watch my other frame sets and see how I've done some masking on these. So I'm just gonna mask off these side sections and I just wanna put in just a few sequins and you don't have to mask it, but it's gonna look so much better and like a continuous pattern if you have a few going off of the edge. Okay, you don't need a lot though. So, so just that. And then I'm gonna put this here. And I could have finished up with the yellow, but I might just do black on this one and just, just have it be a little bit different. Yeah, I think I want a little bit of that yellow. So I'm gonna go in and do the yellow here. And I don't think I did any of the large ones with the yellow. So now that I've got this out, I'm gonna do just a few large ones in the prickly pear to fill in that pattern. And I'm gonna, I wanna stamp this off to get it clean since I was stamping with that black. So I'll put one in here and then put one over here a dark one here and a light one here, a dark one here, and then maybe a light one here. So it's so fun. It just, it, it's like throwing confetti or sequins up in the air. And then I want to mask this off so I can get something on the bottom. Just have my pattern continue. And maybe put one here in the corner. And that's it. And then you just wanna grab your adhesive. And oh, I don't have my adhesive anywhere. Okay, so it's not handy, but you would just put a little bit on the back of each and then just line that up. So let me know in the comments which one you like better, if you prefer the portrait or the landscape style in this, but I hope this gives you lots of ideas. Be sure to go check us out at Stamp TV where we will be posting the PDFs of all of these different wreaths, and I hope you will post your own creations. It's going to be just so fun the whole year, all the different holidays that you can make with those and different ways to decorate this open frame. Thank you so much for watching today. Please visit my blog, Hands, Head, and Heart, and visit our store, Gina K Designs, and Stamp TV. Thank you for watching today. God bless.